This is from Mossad, the Mossad commentary Twitter. They have a Twitter account. Oh, Isn't that wow. amazing? Isn't that amazing? Alex Jones was banned, but Mossad. Uh, Hezbollah says they launched over 50 missiles towards Israel. It appears most, if not all, have been intercepted. So, and then underneath there, this guy says, so far Hezbollah launched 100 plus missiles. So who's, whose number is right? Who knows? Uh, against the Galilee area, northern Israel, in just 15 minutes. I'll show you a video of that in a second. Somehow, this guy says, somehow I have a feeling these initial missile waves are to deplete Israel's Iron Dome interceptors. This is the beginning of an intense night. So here, look at how this looks. This is kind of, it's kind of amazing. Watch this. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. Oh, wow. wow. And then when they blow up, I'm wow, guessing that's the Iron that's Dome that. getting them. <laughs> Look at them. Here they come. Yo! 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 That's something. And then you see, it, it looks like wow. almost every one of them is getting intercepted. Yo! <laughs> Even all those missiles. Why? You go, Kama. We sure this is right now? It's not coming up in my news feed. If you go on Twitter, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, I got these from the right here. It's two hours ago from Mossad. That's the that's the video. Okay. You know, you you can't find it. Uh, not for right now, but yeah, I mean, okay. a lot of times Twitter is is ahead of the press. So here's where they're. So here's there's Beirut. This is where it's happening. Okay. There's the Golan Heights. There's Haifa. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's another. Uh, this is from World Source News. Uh, missiles barrage from Lebanon towards northern Israel. That's where it's All hitting. Right. Yeah, it's three hours ago. That's where it's hitting. Um, so it's okay. on. Now it's on. And so what what BB has wanted uh, is a, a bigger war in the Middle East. He's wanted to draw Iran into this. He's wanted to get Lebanon. He wants to, uh, they want a, the equivalent of World War Three to happen. Uh, and I, it appears that they're getting it. What do you say, Russ? Uh, yes, I, I, we've been saying for a while that Ukraine, the Middle East, World War II didn't just erupt overnight. There were, there were a series of escalatory, um, military engagements before it really became World War II. Um, World War III has probably already started. That's probably how we're going to see it in hindsight. Oh, we're, we're going we're to see Russia going into Ukraine as the opening rounds of World War III. And then the escalation coming with October 7th. And then you bring Iran in and you're pretty much officially into World War III if we involve ourselves, which we have vowed to do. We, we have vowed that if Iran attacks Israel, we're going we're gonna to get involved. So I would start, uh, if this is World War III, I would start it at at least the 2014 Maidan coup. That's where I would start it. When the United States overthrew Ukraine and then started threatening to put them in uh, NATO, mm -hmm. and then um, started building up their defenses for this war. Sure. Uh, that's exactly, so I would say, I would put it right, that, that, that would be my marker of where I would start, if this is World War III, which I hope it isn't. Um, but again, the world's terrorists are the United States. We provoked that war in Ukraine, uh, along with the NATO and uh, the UK. And... For many, for myriad reasons, right? Uh, but all of them economic. All of them economic. Uh, it has nothing to do with liberty or freedom or helping the people. None of this has anything to do with liberty, freedom, or helping the people. Um, and then Benjamin Netanyahu has wanted us to invade every country. He wanted us to invade Iraq. We did. Wants wanted us to do Libya. We did. Wanted us to do Syria. We did. Uh, wanted want, now wants us to do Iran. And it looks like they're gonna. They might get their uh, wish. So, um, I don't, what, what do you, so it looks, it's going to be, uh, Biden or Trump. It looks like it's going to be Trump, but not, not uh, necessarily. I, look, I think they're going to probably rig it. 
That's my guess. Uh, why wouldn't they? Like, of course they. Why wouldn't they? They blow up Building Seven. Uh, they do JFK. Uh, they do Libya. They do Afghanistan for twenty years. I mean, there isn't a thing they haven't lied to you about. They did COVID. Uh, so why wouldn't they? You, you talk, do, you, do you think that's beyond the pale that they would rig an election in the United States? So um, I think they'll do anything, uh, including turning us into a transparent banana republic, which is what they've done in the prosecution of uh, Donald Trump, uh, Russia Gate for the whole thing. And so um, they're going to get their wars, and they got them. And Donald Trump was a, a speed bump in them getting their wars. And to me, that's what this is all about. Um, what, 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 anything you want to say about that, Russ? I, I still don't know that we're going to wind up with a Biden Trump choice. I, I'm not going to believe it till I oh, see. Oh, you think they might replace Joe Biden? I, I definitely think they could end up replacing Joe Biden. Now they're making noises that uh, Biden is going to refuse to debate Trump. Um, I, you know, and well, he of, better. And of course, <laughs> yes, they're going to they're going to make it a point of honor yeah. not to platform Donald Trump. But we all know they they just there aren't enough drugs in the world to get him through that debate no. at this point. Um, and with Trump, I, I've said this repeatedly. If the deep state allows Donald Trump to become the president again, I am going to have to reevaluate all of my beliefs about the power of the deep state. If they allow that to happen, I really have got to say, well, I guess they don't run this shit like I thought they did. Well, I don't think that uh, an assassination attempt is out of the question. I nor nor just just through the lawfare. I think I, mean, look what I think they're trying to do it with the law. That's fair, what they're, but they're, that they try sure. to do it with Russiagate first. Uh, they tried to do it with the uh, lying to the FISA court, getting a phone tap on him. They tried to do it with impeachment. They tried to do it with another impeachment. They tried to do it with the uh, right. this January sixth and criminalizing his uh, his political following, try and then criminalizing him, and now with the ninety two felony indictments, one more ridiculous than the last. Uh, none of those indictments, by the way, have anything to do with January sixth. Isn't that interesting? They say the whole reason why he's a fascist, that's what Cornell West will tell you when he comes on the show. Same thing for Bernie Sanders. They'll say the reason why Donald Trump's a fascist is because he tried to overthrow the peaceful transfer of power on January 6th. Isn't that weird that he, not one of those felony indictments have anything to do with that? Isn't that weird? Well, it's just like Russiagate. People will always tell you, there were indictments for Russiagate. Yeah. None of them had anything to do with the accusations of Russiagate. None of them. Not one of them. No. Um, okay, so it looks like it's on. It looks like it's on. Benjamin Netanyahu uh, has gotten uh, his escalated. Well, the Houthis also uh, have been uh, involved. So you're right. You're right. This is we're probably in it and we don't even know it. Um, right. And the, when, these are the opening salvos. Yeah. These are all the. Old, yep. Uh, yeah. This, the world war doesn't happen like that. It happens drip, drip, drip. And here we go. And. Um, and then you you have a uh, you have a crossing the line into Poland. You have a you have an event that finally just okay. Well, now yeah. now it's on. And I just find it um, hilarious, pathetic, sad, infuriating. You know, to go on social media and to still see people who consider themselves comedians or anti-establishment types uh, obsessed with Donald Trump. Yep. And just as. Uh, some, somehow he's the ultimate evil jerk and they want to see him in prison and they can't stop. Yet the guy, Joe Biden, literally do, uh, funding a genocide. Well, we, uh, I just went to see Ta Donald Trump never did that. Well, just, just, F I FYI, Donald Trump never did that. Just so people know. Go no, ahead. no. Well, you. Well, I mean, these are a lot of the same people who, you know, just, just absolutely lose their shit when George Bush gives a candy to Michelle at a funeral. Yeah. Uh, the last poll I saw the majority of Democrats now approve of George W. Yes. Bush. So at that point, I don't want to hear shit about Donald Trump. But I, I went to see Civil War last night at Grumman's Chinese, and Keaton went to see it today so that we could cover it on Sunday because we could see this was going to be one of these cultural touchstone oh, that is okay. going to start a big conversation. And of course, you know, some people are mad about this movie, but it's mostly liberals because the movie didn't present it as a polemic. It doesn't take a side. It just shows how horrific a civil war in America would be. But it didn't 
line up a bunch of people with red hats as the villains uh-huh. and a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, polyamorous people as the heroes. It didn't do that. So you have some people who are mad that the movie didn't pick a side like that because they cannot see that the entire establishment is evil. It's not one part of the establishment. It's not the Democrats are good. It's not the Republicans are good. The entire establishment is against you. The people in power are against you. And I I thought that was a good choice for that movie to not go partisan with it, to just make it an examination of how horrible that would be if you were like driving down the road and there are snipers in an American town. I mean, you're being Bernie Sanders was on TV yesterday saying how Donald Trump is dividing the country. No, you're dividing the country. You put people, the people who pushed Russiagate dividing the country, the people saying that he's a fascist and Joe Biden isn't are dividing the country. People like Bernie Sanders are dividing the country there. And by the way, the people Bernie Sanders serves, which is the establishment, the military industrial complex, they're the ones pushing for a civil war. And they, again, you always accuse your opponent of what you're guilty of. They're the ones pushing for a civil war. That's exactly what's happening. They've been pushing for it since Donald Trump got elected. Of course. They, I, I remember and, it's, their- and, and, it's probably, and remember, a chaos always favors the establishment, and that's what we've been having. Right. And it, the, George, uh, the, the George Floyd protests, many of them, uh, if not out, outright uh, 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 put on by the, uh, the FBI and the intelligence community, they were certainly spurred on and allowed to happen. And uh, the same thing with COVID. COVID came from a lab, from a Defense Department uh, a project. A lot of most of the funding came from there. And and then then they lied about the science co- nonstop to divide the country. And so this has been happening over and over ever since Donald Trump divide the country. Well, actually, right. ever since I'm I'll, I'll say ever since Occupy Wall Street. I mean, it's always been their game, but it's been really hopped up on steroids ever since uh, Occupy Wall Street is when you start really start, even though uh, race relations are getting better and better and better and better. They knew they had to stoke that fire of ra- of racial tension and they've done it. And the establishment has done it. They've done it through their media. They've done it with the intelligence community. They've done it with the protests and the Rush, R- Russiagate and everybody talking about white supremacy and not. It's that they've, they're getting their way. So when you find yourself falling into that trap, you're doing the bidding of the establishment. When you keep talking about uh, uh, racism and uh, white supremacy and you keep you, that's what you're doing. You're stoking. You're doing the, the, the bidding of the establishment to divide people people. Uh, you know who didn't talk about that stuff was Christian Smalls when he organized the first labor union yep. against Amazon on uh, Staten Island and he did it with Trump voters and black voters and white voters and all kinds because they organized along class lines. And if you get your eye off that ball and it's very easy to do uh, and people do it all the time. People who claim to care about uh, oh we got to organize along class lines and they immediately go, fall back on skin color and they all fall back on identity politics uh and so they speak out of both sides of their mouth but go anything you want to add to this yeah well this is why they have elevated absolutely batshit crackpot academics That's like right. ibram x kendi um like robin d'angelo um and this is some of because like, they speak to, they they preach well, because, division because they preach division and and it's it's the same thing with gender ideology we're going to be covering a lot a little of that later um just if you can get people arguing over insane ideas yes. and absurdities it disempowers them they're not a threat to you i just uh because i'm going to be covering the dissident dialogues which they're going to be having in new york right. lee fong is actually going to be appearing there um john mcwhorter is going to be one of the guests i just uh read his book woke racism and he talks about how until 2013 there's this upward trajectory in race relations that's right and people's perception of race relations and they don't see it as a big problem by 2013 and then it just falls off a cliff that's right and what happens around that time they really start to push these extremely divisive postmodern inflected ideas about uh, you know systemic racism and structural racism and yes there are elements of that in society absolutely right but 
that was being addressed as a societal evil that we had to come together to defeat, whereas these ideas present really a religious formulation yep. where racism is original sin that can never be purged ever but through the blood of intersectionality <laughs> uh and and you you must drink of the cup of intersectional uh philosophy and it's just it's it's an insoluble problem and that's why grifters love it because it's just like the war on terror that's right it can never be resolved never it can be never won. be won so you can always be making money off it that's it'll, right. it'll never end when I went on my travels in uh, in Greece and Italy last year, I, I actually came back and I started talking to some people who are, uh, you know, a little more communist oriented than I am about that. Um, because what I saw is all of these great civilizations and all of these great accomplishments were all built on exploiting somebody. And you know, when you look at these beautiful cathedrals, or you look at the Colosseum, somebody was exploited. Somebody was... was uh, enslaved in some respect to make that and it does definitely raise the question can you have those things without anyone paying the price for it it's it's a very interesting philosophical question well i was just uh, uh i just came back from uh stockholm sweden copenhagen mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who paid the price for those places you know okay so some people will say that the you know people who do not like the social democrat model um they can't really argue against it as a system that benefits the people within those societies that's that's a tough argument to make that that's a bad system to live inside so they will tend to make the argument that western countries that are social social democrat are achieving that level of prosperity through imperialism and exploitation of the resources of impoverished countries oh, that are partly really? okay. kept in poverty okay. through that exploitation. Okay. So that's the argument. Now, my argument, my response to that is, okay, so why not address that problem in the system if that's the case? Why not address that? Instead of trying to change that system, why don't you change what it's predicated on? And if what you're arguing is only that kind of exploitation could allow that kind of material prosperity. Wouldn't that be true of any system then? So, so what are you suggesting? Are you suggesting impoverished communism as opposed to wealthy social democracy? Like, what are you, what are you saying? How do you solve that? I mean, I'm honestly asking, I'm not being dismissive. I, I don't know. All I know is when I, like when I, like when I went to Italy, I haven't been to many places. Well, now recently you can come to me. Uh, when I was in Italy, I was mostly a tourist, right? I was right, just, I right. was, I was in Rome and that's just one big tourist hub. And it's sure. like, I mean, if you've ever been to Rome, uh, we were there in September. It, uh, it's like going to a mall on Christmas. There's just shoulder to shoulder people. And, right, right. um, and then we, then we went to Sorrento, which is this small town on the, uh, on the, on the co coast. And then we went to Positano, which is just a big resort town. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, you know, I really, you know, my my taste of Italy is very skewed from what I saw, right? right so I didn't right. go around to the non touristy towns, right? Uh, but when I this trip, I did. I went to I don't I wouldn't I don't think Stockholm, Sweden's a touristy. Uh, there are tourists, sure, but it's right. not uh, like that. Rome is Rome, right? Not right. like Rome, not like Venice, right? Um, oh, Venice, not like forget about it, right? Not like Lake Como, um, but you know, I'm. You know, I don't think Stockholm or Copenhagen or Oslo or our vacation destinations, uh, you know, they're just great cities. Uh, Amsterdam, a lot of people, of course, would, would agree that that's a big touristy place, and it is, right? Um, so, but there's, I mean, I cannot get over how wonderful those places are, mm -hmm. and especially as opposed to, when you're coming back to the United States, it's just like I can't believe I'm coming. I just I didn't I didn't want to come back. I I really wanted to stay there. It was so nice. And now London um, has a you know it felt like New York. It felt a lot to me like New York or it, it's it it's uh it's not charming. Put it that way. I didn't see the charm. I mean I like the old buildings and the and the architecture and 
Um, they're but they're they privatize their it's, water. It is. It is pri- a they privatize pri- their fucking water. And well, so you now there's going to be a TV license there. And now they're going to forty percent. So now they privatize their water supply. And guess what? Now they're all going to have to pay forty percent hike in their water bills in one year. Isn't that something? Um, and then they're privatizing their NHS too. I had a um, guy talking to me about it when I was there in London. How they're doing that? Uh, their national health service is already being way more than you think privatized and run by Western companies. Uh, for the, anyway, so yeah, so London. Um, I, I didn't realize they'd made that much progress with that. I knew they wanted to do it. It's it's already not. It's already worse than you think. Huh. Um. So yeah. So i London. Not the. Uh, I wouldn't put it in the category of a Stockholm, of a of a Copenhagen, of an Oslo, or an Amsterdam, Rotterdam. Um, those are just the places I've been. So now I haven't been to. Ireland. I didn't go to Scotland. I didn't go to Manchester, and I didn't go to UK. I didn't go to Liverpool. So I've only went to London. So I, again, I, I've had I have limited, you know, and I didn't spend a lot of time in any of those places. But you can just feel it, man. You feel the energy of a place you're in, and every place has its own energy. Yeah. And and by the way, all those cities spotless, it's freaking spotless. I saw one homeless person. Uh, and that was in Amsterdam. You almost you almost never see it. And and th- and this is something I say a lot to people who in America think there can be no system that has any capitalist components that can work. I always say, have, have you been outside of America, man? Right, right. Like, have you been? Because it's this is the worst Western country that I've seen. I haven't been to all of them, but I, I was telling you. I, I was in five countries in the last year, and the one that America is the most like is India. Yeah. It's not like India, but it's more mm. like India than it is like Europe. It's closer to yes. that yeah. than it is to Europe. So and there's it, the, the, if you're evaluating it based on your experience in America, that you cannot have a society that has any a, a kind of... A, economic freedoms but certain socialized elements and that can't work you're going by america america is a shithole it is a <laughs> that was the irony shithole. of donald trump calling those other countries shitholes yes like dude, you're have, from america have you have you driven around <laughs> have you you know it's like when uh marion williamson was talking to bill maher she's like have you driven around and he's like no why would i go to the bad parts <laughs> right, right. Well, I don't go to Skid Row. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, but you know, you can live in the the, the nice parts. There's homeless people everywhere. It, sure, no, no. There's a couple couple blocks down the street from my house. There's a homeless person there. Right. Uh, then there's a homeless. There used to be a homeless in camp just right around the corner. A camp. Um, yeah, no, you see it all over the country, man. In New Orleans, under the uh, under the overpasses, you got tents. Yeah, all these people pitching tents. When I showed, I, I live streamed something from Magazine Street in New Orleans, and the point of what I was saying was how every place has been gentrified. Every You have yes. this monoculture everywhere, monoculture. even in New Orleans. Monoculture. It's the body shop. It's the Playa Bowl. It's the same fucking shit. The unique cultures of all these places are disappearing. And people from Europe who saw the video commented on how bad the street was. And my point was, this is the nice part. That's the nice street. This was the nice part. But to them, they were like, what's wrong with those roads? And they were better than they are if you go three blocks off Magazine Street. It's all just potholes and flooded roads. There are places in New Orleans, this is in America, where the roads have been unserviced for so long that you have some asphalt and it goes back to dirt. It's it's yeah. decayed back to dirt roads. And it's not like we don't have the money because we, we could repave every road in America for what we sent to Ukraine. Come see us on tour. We're going to be in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, Cortland, New York, Oakmont, Pennsylvania, El Paso, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, Vancouver, British Columbia, first show sold out, Denver, Colorado, Ashland, Virginia, Athens, Georgia, and Minneapolis, we're coming back to Minneapolis. If you couldn't get tickets last time, there'll be some available this time. We're doing two shows. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm-hmm.